Yeah, yeah. All happy? All right. Let's get this one going. All right, let's go for it. Good luck, guys. And hello and welcome to Central Park Lanes in East Boston. My name is Greg Guyar with a very heavily improvised setup here. But we're here upstairs at Lanes 13 and 14. And what a treat we have here. The debut in Class A for both of the Gacharna brothers. Fernando Gacharna, the Division B defending champion. And Lou Gacharna, new to the league this year. You see Lou on your right side. And Fernando on your left. So these are two simultaneous different matches. Lou and Fernando are not bowling head-to-head -head this week, although they will next week. This week it's Lou Gacharna versus Rich Lamoni and Fernando Gacharna against Ed Woodside. Both bowlers open to start this first frame. It's five strings, five boxes at a time, and lose first is an eight. Fernando, a nine. Lou gets a good head pin hit this time, but left the two, three, six, and 10. Fernando strike, he's on the head pin with a crushing delivery, and he's got his first Class A strike. Lou gets a decent out of that, two out of the four remaining pins, eight bucks. So this is the division you see here. Lou Gacharna, Fernando Gacharna, Rich Lamoni, and Ed Woodside, the latter is who you'll see in just a moment. Lou gets a decent sidewall bounce. One, three, four, and seven. Nico, hello and welcome. It's good to see you as always. Fernando gets six on his first strike fill ball. Lou gets back on the head pin this time, but doesn't get it. And it will be seven on the strike fill. As that second ball scoots just wide. Lou darn near got a nine out, a uh, ten out of that, excuse me. He did manage the nine. Fernando likewise. So Fernando settling in just nicely. You remember the rust at the beginning of the finals match with Danny Finn and even there he recovered from that start to overcome the commissioner and become this then semi-pro now division B defending champion. That's a head pin hit but it's a little full and it will be the three, four and six. Folks, I'll start the backup recording here. I apologize if any frames are getting dropped. Fernando just wide of the object. Had he gotten a little further left, he might have possibly sliced it. Lou needs an out here. He's got the head pin. Unlucky not to get a better angle on it. Ends up with seven. And Fernando eight. So we appreciate your patience as I get my bearings here. It's a challenging setup, but a very... It's definitely a one-of-a-kind atmosphere, and I greatly appreciate it. Great people here in East Boston. And 22 lanes of fun here between the two levels. If you haven't yet checked it out, Central Park Lanes in East Boston. I know after my first Instant Classic video between Woodside and McClellan, with Woodside being the visitor out of... Central Park Lanes. I know I inspired at least one person to come down here to Central Park Lanes. 
Lou's got an interesting spare try. 5-7 just cut the 5 behind. No good. Fernando's got a hay bale on the left side. Got on the object. That's the second time this box he's gotten on the object. And unfortunately, nothing to show with it. Lou checks out with 10. And he gets a 42 and a half in his match against Rich Lamoni. Fernando has hit three object pins and ends up with an eight box anyway. And you see his reaction. So folks, if there's any issues with the streaming quality, please let me know. We're doing the best we can. And in the worst case scenario, we will have that backup recording and we'll have that for you on Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Candlepin Bowling Network. This is Rich Lamoni on the right side. He washes out a whole bunch to start. In fact, he would got everything except the head pin for the ultimate washout. Woodside. This is Ed Woodside on the left side of lane 13. Pins are still dancing and he's getting more and more. Lamoni off to a good start, using the wood to perfection. Woodside just left of the object. Checks it out this time, he's got 10. That third ball can be critical. We'll see if that makes a difference down the stretch. Lamoni got a big splash on the spare fill and he has eight. Woodside, in his match, has a good leave of his own. Both bowlers open, two pins remaining. And we've already got a dozen of you here. Welcome. It's nine apiece. If there's a sleeper pick for this year, I might recommend picking Ed Woodside. Remember, he won the division last year and ended up as the number three seed overall. hit and powerful hits like this which have left the wood in an incredibly symmetric array look at this two pieces of wood lying both on the sidewalls they're both out of play of course but I've never quite seen it settle like that incredible Lamoni kicks it across and got a tremendous two and one split conversion Woodside missed on the second ball and gets a nine. Still pinning when well overall, losing less than a pin per box in the first three frames. Moni, big splash. He didn't get the nine pin in back. Unlucky for the sake of the fill. But he will still get seven anyway. Woodside is a three and one washout. Lamoni trying for another sweet slice, but doesn't do it this time. Woodside well played on the second ball, leaves the seven pin. Lamoni has eight and Woodside has 10. Woodside's got a good leave here. He has the 2-5 remaining. Lamoni, check mark and two on the left side. Oh, slice it over. Got a lot of sticks on the second ball and that will help. Woodside gets there and he's got his first mark to sit down on. <laughs> so 
so we'll put that mark on the board. There we go. Look at that, a few tight matches. So Rich Lamoni with his first two spares, I should say actually, two spares and three pins gained in counts on the third ball has put him in front by a comfortable 18 pin margin. Meanwhile, Ed Woodside will do well to, will want a good spill. What the words I want to say, Gregory. He'll want a lot of pins on this spare fill. Fernando needs to work out a half Worcester. Woo! As Dave Jesterko's favorite leaf, the four and two. Getting on the outside of the half Worcester, a lot of people say is the best way to play the shot. And a pin darn near rolled across and gave Fernando some extra action. Instead, he's got a good out coming up with the 6-10. Lou gets seven. Fernando slices the head pin a bit thin. Pin comes back for the five, but doesn't get it. Now dominoes are dropping for Lou and he's blown out eight pins away from the head pin. He's got a chance here with the one and three. Fernando, and there it is again. No jitters on this first string for the newly promoted bowler. coming up. Gets a huge sidewall, Karaman. He's got eight. Lou has the eight pin back there as well, so he's got a cluster of five on the left. Can Fernando now go back to back? Left it to the right, in a manner of speaking. Lou's try, just left. Took out three pins, and it'll give him a chance for ten. But against the two marks of Rich Lamoni, I'm not sure this will be enough. It's nine apiece for the two brothers. And I realize in a bit my discombobulation that I haven't explained the format of ACSC yet. It's five strings, five boxes of a time. I explained that much. Each string is worth two match points, which are the big numbers you see at the top of your screen. Ties split the points and four is total. And if Fernando keeps going like that, he may well be well on his way to winning all of that. Strike. Has nine. Strike fell on the way for Fernando. Oh, on the head pin. And he'll need a second ball to get a good fill out of this, despite the accuracy. Lou takes out three on the left side. It's not very easy to convert this lead for a spare since the two and three are parallel. Fernando trying to slice it anyway. Picks up more on the strike fill. He has seven. Whoa, with a huge bounce back ball. And he will stay up to fill in the 10th. Fernando's nine by my unofficial count finishes him with 112 in his respective match against Ed Woodside. Woodside will need Good count on this spare and another fill. And good count and another spare to make it work. Huge hit! 
And a 10 on the 10th box, Phil. And Fernando rebounds and could possibly still be in the running for total with that 96. And of course, still four strings to go. We'll confirm final scores after these five boxes, but first, the conclusion of each of these simultaneous matches. These two bowlers, both the home bowlers here at Central Park Lanes in East Boston, and on your right is Ed Woodside. That's head pin, big mix strike on spare. Amoni Sidewell Karam. So with good count here, Woodside should win his respective game. Taking a look at Rich Lamonis, he should be able to pin out comfortably from here. The more marks he can get, the better for total. He's got nine. In case you can hear the background noise, there's a another league happening on this level. I believe it's either a mixed or a women's league on this level. What a great atmosphere here in East Boston. Both bowlers drop seven. Woodside still filling the strike. Picks up one more pin. Didn't like the shot, but he does have an eight fill on the strike. Lamone just wide. One of those cases where if he had the he has the angle, so if he was a little further left, probably would have gone. Hey, that's one way to get 10. We'll take those. Crazy sidewall, Karam, and Rich Lamoni found a way. What's I got on the head pin? Now then. He's got the 710, but a ridiculous wood pile. And there is a piece in the back that's vertically aligned and might possibly be wired for the seven. Accessing it is another question. He's going way left on it. And the wood isn't nearly as responsive to that placement. Lamoni's try. Got on the target pin, left the nine. Good pin for Woodside, he needed that one. I'm gonna check the situation real quick. Oh, what a big hit by Ed Woodside, and he's got a strike. And Rich in his own match might have a strike of his own. He darn near did. And he gets his spare. Recombobulate myself. This on a strike for Ed Woodside. Yes, he's got the extra action. Lamoni's spare fill produces six. I might have been a few pins too high on his count. Now we're caught up. Woodside at 10, Lamoni and eight. 
And we'll confirm those scores real quick. Look at this hit by Lou to start the second strike. Perfect. Fernando darn near got back on that head pin and nearly got the mark. 10 for him. Phil coming on up. He's got the head pin, and the 6-10 will stay put. Not quite a double. Fernando's got a tricky one with the 3-10. Wood came back, but it only collected the 10 in the process. Move strike Phil will remain eight. Fernando starts off with five, Lou has six. Yes, he's got the one, four, eight, and 10. Both of these leaves a challenge. for Fernando and 10 for Lou likewise in their separate matchups the bowlers were offered the chance to go head to head but you need unanimous consent in order to do that and it was declined so this is why we have the matchups the way they are which is the way the ACSC was designed so absolutely no harm no foul there as long as you, dear viewer, understand that it's separate matchups, I think we're all good here. Oh, what a sweet slice by Fernando. What a great showing in his Class A debut. Lou has an eight. One hundred twelve in the first string for Fernando Gacharna. Remember, he averaged one hundred ten last year. So already off to an above average start. This time he's got the head pin with a powerful hit, and only the king stands. 
Well, a big hit likewise, but unfortunately, he's got the corners. That's gone for Fernando, and he's got strike on spare. Two back-to-back -back spares, I meant to say. Excuse me. Woodside and Lamoni, respectively. Lamoni's got, does he have that seven pin wobbling? No, but there is wood available. Oh boy. <laughs> and adjusted final score, Fernando was listed as having 110 in his first string. Let's get that 10 in for Ed Woodside. Again, appreciate your patience with this improvised setup here. As Woodside drops eight and has a significantly good leave. 6-10 with Wood in front. Lamone, big hit. Helicoptering piece of wood, where's it going to stop? Oh, is it going to sit nicely? Good news there is Woodside collects his spare. Lamoni trying to wire the wood. Yes, perfect shot. Got on the red line. The stars aligned and it was a great shot. Woodside spare fill is seven. Lamoni six. Lamoni good shot, but didn't get, didn't carry it. Woodside needs pins here. He's in a bit of a battle. Got a second object pin and he ends up with eight. Such are the ways of uh, manual scoring. We either, well, we're both doing manual scoring. It could very easily be my error. Final score of the string one was 112 to 95 in favor of Rich Lamoni. But the match points, crucially, you see on your screen are correct. Looks like love that shot and the pins loved it too. Just the 10 pin left. Three on the first ball for Lamoni. He'll step away and regroup as Ed Woodside gets his second spare. Got a Lamoni has five pins remaining. One, two, five, six, ten. On the object pin, two full, and it's seven. Rich Lamoni last year was in a completely different division. He averaged 112. And it was in a division with Frank DeLuca, Bruno DeFeo, and then later Josh Daly substituted in. 
I think Rich Lamoni is frankly happy to be out of that division if I had to guess. Now that he's out of ACST North. And hoping for a better go round for this longtime ACST competitor. He collects a spare to sit down on in the fifth. Woodside beside himself, he missed that pin, but nonetheless has a 60 half by my count. Checking with you, you all, how you doing? Well, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Remember, Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour on Facebook. Don't forget to follow the page so you're always in on the loop. And new this time around, Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour also has a YouTube channel. It needs a lot more subscribers, so search up Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour on YouTube and hit subscribe because there's a lot of great archive footage, and we think you'll enjoy it. Fernando's on a spare bill. He's got seven. <sighs> Lou just missed the object. So Fernando, by my count, is a 65 half. One, three, six. It's there, but it rings the six pin. Lou's starting to find a rhythm. He's picking up more pins than he did in the first string, and that's a good sign of things to come, the way I see it. Five string format, still plenty of match points to go. Remember, both of these brothers, Kacharna, making their debut. Lots of championships and TV and streaming appearances for the entire family. Between them and Blanca, a lot to talk about. And they did recently in the Approach podcast. You can find Danny Finns and Jeremy Seaholm's podcast, The Approach, Candle Pin Bowling Broadcast, and all the usual places for your podcasts. Luke got on the object pin, but didn't get his. Fernando slices the six pin, and how in the world did it get in front of the nine? Lou 9 and Fernando 10 in their respective matches. We'll be recording this on backup as well. I know the signal is spotty up here on the upper level. The Wi-Fi router just wasn't designed for this, I don't think. But we're doing our best, and you will see it later on Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Please subscribe when you have the chance. Two difficult leaves here. Move for 7 10 doesn't go. This is 1 2 8 for Fernando. He's got a difficult leave. He had that full delivery that could have worked on that shot, but he, Fernando got it just a bit too far to the left. But he's actually pinning extremely well. He has only left one pin on the deck, Fernando has. Two spares for 16 bonus pins and losing only one among his six open frames. Lou Gacharna gets a good hit this time. He's got the two, four, and seven with a plank that I'm not convinced is going to help because I'm not sure it's bridging all three pins. It might be. Fernando, a big hit. Lou gets to the object pin, and he's got a mark of his own. And both of them putting up challenges. Lou, the designated visitor, even though he's also out of Central Park Lanes. And Fernando, when he does his home matches, will be at Olindy's in Quincy. Quincy. Quincy? Quincy? You tell me. Oh, my word. Somehow, some way, 
Lou gets a two fill despite hitting the head pin on a spare fill. Fernando on a strike fill. Head pin was a bit thin apparently and he's got the hay bale on the right side. Five so far on the strike fill. Lou needs an out here. What a great shot for Fernando. So Lou gets eight. And Fernando, my goodness, what a start he's having. One twenty-five plus this. He missed the head pin, but the power and the angle collects him seven more. And what a tremendous debut. Rich Lamoni is on a spare fill. We'll finally get these smudges off screen. I may have to do without the smudge macros, unfortunately, the little triangles. There's just so much to keep track of here with these two simultaneous matches taking place. Lamoni's got eight on the spare fill. Woodside eight likewise. So Rich Lamoni has a 61 half and he's in good shape here. Slice the three pin just in front of the six. Woodside, perfect. So 70 and a ball for Ed Woodside. So the outlook as we go down the stretch, Rich Lamoni a huge favorite to win this next string, presuming decent pinning. He would have to average eights in order to possibly lose any of the either of the two match points. Ed Woodside, well, if Ed Woodside, who already has three spares in the string, gets a few more, there's still a chance for him here. He's been pinning well, he's been filling well. As <laughs> the two veterans share a few words. Moni thin on the head pin. He's got five. We've seen that hay bale leave frequently so far in this match. Woodside spare fill is a big one. And he's got nine and a kingpin leave. Uh-oh. Got it. And he has another one. Four spares for Woodside. And he's making a run at it. At the very least, despite Fernando's hot start, Ed Woodside will be competitive for total. Keeping in mind that it is also Lou Gacharna's debut in this league, Rich Lamoni, the veteran, is off to a hot start. But of course, plenty more strings to go and anything can happen. Yes, that 10 pin drops out for Rich Lamoni. He's got the 1-3. Woodside, he's got the power. That 10 pin was hit, was it not? My goodness. And it's four. Boy, puzzle me this on how you make that leave. Great shot by Lamoni, and he's got his third spare of the string. Woodside, good pins on the second ball. And not a bad out at all, that's nine. So Woodside remaining on pace for a 120 string. But we'll need probably two marks in all likelihood to have a chance at winning the match points for this string. That's a diamond and a 10 pin for Lamoni. He's got five. Woodside, powerful hit. He's got the check mark, he tripped out his back pin. Wow. 
That's not a bad second ball at all. Could have easily punched through and caused a nightmare. Instead, Lamoni has a tenable arrangement. Woodside gets it. And out of the corner of my eye, I see Fernando reacting because he knew knows how significant that fill was. That mark was, I should say. Lamoni gets 10, and he has now mathematically won the second string. Woodside is now ahead in total. If he can get one more mark here, he wins, by my count. Heaven forbid I've made a math error. Maybe some of you astute enough have noticed this. Thought that was a full hit, but he got a sidewall action and gets rewarded for his head pin hit with an eight drop. Woodside just missed the head pin. Now, this leave is not awful, but it is six. One, three, six, seven. In the pot, no, he's full. It looked like it was a pocket shot down the lane. And my belief is that Fernando Gacharna has won his first two match points. We'll confirm. My goodness, how about that for a hot start? Again, Lou starts with a strike. Fernando gets seven. Did he slice it? Yes, he did. Mercy, Fernando! What a shot! Oh my goodness, what a showing! All right. Tight match going between well, Lou and Lamoni. No, excuse me. Lamoni has a sizable advantage right now. And then in the other match, what a great wire-to-wire -wire match between Fernando Gacharner and Ed Woodside. Did I say Gacharner? I beg your pardon. Oh, my! Sliced the outer layer. Got the triangle but not the diamond, Fernando did. Let's bring those scoreboards back into view. Thank you. 
Two pins remaining for each of the brothers. Remember those match points at the top of your screen is what's determining the standings. So two match points for each string win and four for total. There's a head pin hit and Lou's got another strike. His second. And after two relatively quiet strings by Lou Gacharna standards, two strikes might be the sign of an imminent turnaround. This is why we watch every box, every string. Still needs a strike, Phil. He's got three on the first ball. Fernando got the spare. Now is Phil. He's got five. Lou, what a big hit. Did he get this one? That's a significant hit because it just turned his strike, Phil, into nine. Fernando on the head pin. Got sticks. And they're starting to settle into the rhythm, the pair of them. Well, Fernando's got an eight, but still a 57 half. And here comes Lou Gacharna in his match against Rich Limoni, a 64 half. Remember, we are not bowling head to head. We're bowling classic ACST order. You're just watching two simultaneous matches. As the first half of boxes is complete. Lamoni has a diamond. Woodside head pin hit. He's got a sleeper pin in back. He's got the hay bale, but look at this piece of wood that swiveled around. Chance to collect the entire hay bale. On it, ooh, I thought that was wired, apparently not. Lamoni nine and Dwitside a 10. That's a triangle for Lamoni. He's got better leave. Whoa, that was thunderous. Get over four. Thank you very much. Woodside has his third strike of the day. And 10 for Lamoni as Woodside will fill his strike and start to answer back against Fernando Gacharna. That's Woodside has been representing Central Park Lanes for a long time now, dating back to when he appeared on Channel 50. Representing CPL in East Boston then as well. And remember, he won the he won his division last year. And shots like that are why, even though this time he's got an ugly split with the 6-7. There is a nine pin hiding back for Rich Lamoni on the object pin, and the head pin just scoots away from everything, and the ball deflects in front as well. 
Remember, Ed is still filling the strike, so we'll see the update. Not where Ed wanted to play that shot, he mentions. So the strike fill for Woodside is eight, and the box for each of them is nine. But notice how Ed Woodside is right in the thick of it. Despite being one mark down, he got a good fill and is pinning well. Which means his one strike could be just as good as Fernando's two spares. We'll see. Two and one split. Good second ball by Lamoni, but it won't carry the 10. What side? That's on a plank. It did carry him over and collects two more pins. And it will be 9 or 10 for the pair of them. A significant 10 box for Ed Woods, I'd remember, considering how tight that matchup is. These two have been pushing them each other, Fernando and Ed Woodside. Lamoni on the head pin. Who's been comfortably going wire to wire. Oh, an inverted triangle. My goodness. Well, I've never seen it made. There might be a first time for everything. Lamoni cuts it over. Two pins get to the 10. And one way or another, it had to drop. See you later. What side? Oh, this will be something. Good sticks. And a third ball coming up. Okay, nine. So that puts, by my count, Fernando one up. Let's confirm that real quick. Oh, son of a gun, we got it right. I'll mark this spare for you to indicate Rich Lamoni's spare. That's significant detail. I haven't been updating the smudge as well this match, but I want to give you, the viewer, as much opportunity to follow along as possible. And that's why I am huddled in a corner here on the upper level of East of Central Park Lanes. Never when they invent at this place that they think I'd be doing this, but here we are, and what a treat it is to bring you week one action with the league debut. Of a class A debut, rather. For Fernando and Lou. Oh, what a hit. And that's the third string in a row that Lou Gajana has started with a strike. How about that? Well, that's, that's terrible situational awareness, but a third strike. It's the third time he's come up in a visit and hit a strike. That much is true. Good spare by Fernando as well. Just scooted by the head pin on the fill, but gets a wacky sidewall carom. And that gleaming orange pin, not really sitting in a good spot. Lou still filling the strike. Aaron and Joe, it's great to hear from you. Deadwood check, and the pin does have to be removed because it's too far forward. Everybody say hi to Mike and thank him for clearing that Deadwood out for us. Fernando's bid. Wow, that pin did not miss that seven by much. Still filling the strike is Lou. Good mix, and he does get a nine out of this. And that will give... Ah, 
That will give Rich Lamoni the proverbial something to think about as he pins a 10. Lou in the past two strings has not lost more than a pin per open frame, so he's pinning well. Huge hit, storming the, stomping his foot on the approach, begging those pins to drop, and Fernando does get a bunch. Left the six. Lou has the one, six, nine, and 10. Bingo! Fourth spare of the string for Fernando in his match against Ed Woodside. Lou now pins are kicking across, but they're all going to go behind the head pin. Well, some pins aren't meant to be, but it is nine. What a great mix on the spare fill for Fernando. He's got eight. I was making that comment earlier. Fernando didn't have quite the spare fills he was after, but now he's getting them this time. His bid for five on the object, yes. And once again, Fernando has a mark, and this time it's back to back. This try slams into the wood, and yes, it all carries. What a great shot. And that's his fourth mark of the string, and he's both of these two in their respective matches with a chance at 130s with high enough fills. Two spare fills. Fernando, that's five. Well, there's that gosh darn hay bale again. How many times has it been this match? It seems as though that head pin is wont to slice to the side and never really do his job. Fernando. Well, good mix on the second ball. How about this? This time it goes. Lou has his fifth mark. Marks in half of the boxes. Fernando, hey, that would have been sweet, wouldn't it? Nothing. Not too shabby at all. 125 by my unofficial count. And Lou on his fifth mark. Three strikes, all with big counts. Average fill of, of almost nine, 8.67. His last spare fill was five. And now Rich Lamoni has a problem on his hands. The fill is high! The seven pin was hit, but the fill is nine. And now, Lam so Rich Lamoni does stand up on a spare fill. We'll take that marking away before I confuse myself, before I hurt myself in my confusion. And with good count, Lamoni will be in this match, but he could not pin out a lead in total. This match is now very even between Lou Gacharner and Rich Lamoni. Fernando slightly ahead of Ed Woodside. But with a couple of marks, Ed Woodside could be back in it. He took X out three on the first ball. Lamoni a huge hit. Yes, that four is going to drop. And he's got the six. Still a three and one split to deal with for Ed Woodside. Lamoni against the six pin, yes. Good sticks for Woodside. And yes, he did get everything else. He got the nine. Phil for Lamoni on the spare. Here comes another one. 
Ah, he's only got four this time. Leaving the DC special. Lots of watching New England candle pins made me remember that. I would love nothing more than to see that show come back. And it's pretty when it goes, but it didn't go this time. Still. <laughs> We're in Easty, we understand. <laughs> I was sharing an exchange. <laughs> I was sharing an exchange with Richie who doesn't want to say some of the things he wants to say to the pin, so that's why he's keeping his back to the camera. He's doing very well for himself right now, but Lou has given him quite a challenge. What side is a ridiculous situation here? I don't know how he's going to get that fourth pin. Woods bridging three of them, and indeed that seven pin. He's upset with him on that shot. Maybe he wanted to play that wood elsewhere. Huge hit! Oh my goodness, seven pin. Are you not going to drop? Well... Doesn't go for either of them as it happens. And it's looking more and more as though Lou is going to take this third string. And open his checking account here in the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. Woodside, that piece of wood crazily caroms, but he's got a 5-7. Fernando is a heavy favorite to win his string as well. So Blanca and Blanca, if you're watching, they're doing pretty well for themselves. Spare for Woodside. Lamoni got it! Perfect carom off the wood, and the 5-7-9 is a goner. That's significant because Rich Lamoni has to rebuild a lead now after Lou Gacharna's hot 136 third string. But now, all these pins Rich Lamoni gets is profit. On the spare fill, that is. Woodside 7, he's got this ridiculous leave. Yeah, and that piece of wood just never does what you want it to, does it? Money carries the wood. Ooh, didn't go back towards the eight. And it's ten apiece. People call that leave all sorts of things. The left hook. Dan Castle calls it the castle. And maybe some other colorful terms. We'll confirm scores. Fernando starts string number four with a five drop, two full. Lou, does he get a strike this time? Not this time. Quick peek at the scoreboard. Tight match all of a sudden between Lou and Rich Lamoni. Those are the official scores you now see on your screen. 
six pin gap. And of course, remember it's two match points per string win, so I need to update that as well. Nine apiece to begin. A great comeback on the half Worcester and lose got it for Fernando, who's got a big hit, but he's got the corners full, and I think that's the second time that's happened, unless that rolling piece of wood settles the seven. Now he's gonna roll out this way. I'm not sure that's going to help too much. It did settle against the lip of the lane. Fernando, <laughs> he's, he's putting a bit on it. Slicing the right tip, got the 10 pin. Not a bad bit at all. Right out for Fernando, he's got nine. a spare fill those astute of you will have noticed so I'm going to need to get this sorted out. Lou's got nine. Don't trip on the wood. Oh he tripped on the other piece of wood. See, it's a tricky shot. He has to split the difference between if it's too far right, he'd deflect away that direction. Fernando again with a sweet escape. There's a lead for Fernando to look at. He's got the two, four, and seven. Lou, big hit, going over, kingpin, see you later. And he will sit down on a mark. Fernando waiting for the ball return. Hasn't had much to shoot at, but he makes the most of this opportunity, and he's back on schedule. And the totals between these, between all these bowlers in their separate matchups. Tight on both accounts. Big hit by Ed Woodside, and he's got nine. Oh, sorry, this string off, and Limoni's got a strike. And Woodside a spare. Oh. 
Six for Woodside on the spare fill. Lamoni still filling the strike. Perfect, played it on the outside. He clutched his head. I don't think that's where he wanted to place it, but a spare is a spare is a spare. There's a hit. Again, the hay bale. So nine pin hiding back there for Rich Lamoni. Woodside, good bid, no five pin. Got it, spare on. St Spare on spare, that should be. And Lamoni has a spare fill of five. Another short pin for Woodside, and he's incensed. Both bowlers leave one for the third ball. And Lamoni with three marks in a row, that's a 10 box, with three marks in a row is cruising back, back into pole position. One more box for the two home bowlers. Remember the schedule of ACST is, the schedule of ACST is three rivalry matches within the division, a dozen matches between everyone within the conference, and then three more rivalry matches within the division to close the season out. 18 weeks in all, and then it's playoffs time. Woodside spares, and he'll sit down with a 54 plus half. Lamoni, yes, and he's got a four mark half. Well, it's a miracle, folks. My math is correct. Well, I would like to give a shout out to my alma mater, Bentley University, for the mathematical sciences degree. I guess it was good for something. And that shot is good for a lot, but for Luga Charna, he's got nine. And counting on the strike. And a spare on strike. Good bounce back, he's got pins. And that's significant because it's going to keep Fernando around. He's got nine, but that second ball was very significant. We'll take the smudges away, but remember that Lou Gacharna is on a spare. Here comes the fill, he's got seven. Three marks in six boxes. Leaves him with an 83. Fernando can't buy a break on the head pin either. He's got a two and two split. Lou sliced it just behind the four pin. Hey, 
Mm, trying to play inside. Perhaps the ball could have caromed. Or just a shade over. Lou pins out well. And remember, when Fernando does his home matches, they'll be at Olindy's in Quincy, Massachusetts. Right now, we are here at Central Park Lanes in East Boston. Proudly streaming on the Atlantic Candlepin Single Store Facebook page and on YouTube at Candlepin Bowling Network on demand after the fact. But also remember, Atlantic Candlepin Single Store has a YouTube page of its own. Search Atlantic Candlepin Single Store on YouTube and remember to subscribe to the channel. It's got lots of matches from past and present over the now five-year existence, five to six-year existence of this league. Fernando liked it going down, got, to, got a lot of sticks on the second ball. Second ball can easily be just as significant as the third ball when it comes to pinning. Lou gets eight and Fernando 10. Oh, son of a gun, a record. Son of a gun, I guess I had an encoder error on my stream. On my recording, that is. Never easy to get all the pieces right, so unfortunately it looks as though the flash drive recording will not be perfect. Nonetheless, lessons learned for the next time, and we greatly appreciate every one of you watching this match. And we've got a bit of a delay here for the pin setter. Sir. Remember, Ed Woodside, I mentioned, was dominant last year. He had a 60% win rate, a 118 average, and that was good for a number three seed. Unfortunately, could not get past the first round of the playoffs as Stephen Reno Jr.'s 603 saw him off in the first round. Reno Jr., recall, made a very deep playoff run, making it all the way to the conference finals until Justin Waters took the then Pro Division or Division A Southern Crown. And eventually, the whole darn thing. We're back to action here. Lou has won eight and 10. Fernando's try head pin, five and seven. And bemoans his bad fortune. Both bowlers open. Lou gets nine. And so does Fernando. So where does that leave us? Lou realistically needs one more mark to stay competitive here in this particular string and get back in the mix on total. With a one, two, four, and nine, that's going to be exceptionally difficult. Fernando might be too far behind in this string right now. This leave is just ridiculous. He got the head pin and has a five, seven, eight, and nine. Lou gets everything except the head pin. 
But Fernando is competitive in total against Ed Woodside right now. I don't think he's going to get the mark, but every pin's going to matter in this penultimate string. Didn't get anything on the second ball. And just missed the kingpin and ends up with a seven for a 90 string. So with both of the home bowlers on spares, it looks increasingly as though they are going to win those two standings points. I haven't said a lot about Rich Lamoni's bowling, but it's just been a generally steady. Despite just the one strike, Rich Lamoni has had 12 spares. And by and large, everyone's been pinning very well. Losing about the pen a box, nothing more than that. Good grief. What's like begging that six pin to go? So both bowlers get seven fills. That wood just was not going to slice, no way, no how. Six for er, Limoni on the first drop. Seven for Woodside. There's a pin lying out there, so Fernando's going to check on that for Ed. It is. <laughs> Lamoni always made a few dandies today. This time he's got a devious lead for the third ball. Ed, can he get that piece of wood to go? The cap was there, but the ball didn't deflect nicely off it. already on four marks. Now his four pins and a zigzag looking back at him. Ed Woodside. Two spares in the strings so far. Lamoni trying to sweep this wood. He's too high on the cap. Ball's kicking back across the deck, but it's not going to do anything. Woodside's try 3-6 just wide of the three pin and no spare. Who's going to get the ball? Fernando, remember, is the defending Division B champion with a 72% win rate. Dave Dorman at 80% that same year in 80 uh, with in Division B. And 10 apiece. Recall also that his Fernando's championship run went through Lane Britton, Rob Brown, Justin Lyonnais, and if there ever could be a more fitting final boss, the ACST commissioner himself, Danny Finn. Coverage of a lot of those matches can be found right here on ACST Facebook, probably soon ACST YouTube, and over on Candlepin Bowling Network.
spread eagle plus the eight, I believe. Huh. It is a spread eagle for each of them. Woodside slices it over. That three pin got tapped, which is quite an accomplishment. That's a very good out by Rich Lamoni on the third ball, turning a spread eagle into nine after finding the void on the second. Woodside gets the same nine. After pinning soundly in his own right. Seemed like a more deliberately angled ball by Rich and it got the job done. Keeping him 15 ahead in total, Ed Woodside seven ahead in total. What's that big hit? And he left the four pin. Got the sleeper pin back there. Nope. The four and two leave doesn't work. What side spares? And he'll fill in the tenth. Lamoni gets his ten. He has won. Drawing number four by my unofficial count. So has Ed Woodside. Woodside's fill is a not bad at all. He got the head pin and ends up with six. We'll check. Scores are confirmed as you see them. Lou has the best lead for the fifth and final string. Just wide. Pins mixing in the back. Fernando has four remaining. Well, that looked like a huge hit, didn't it? Now, is this piece of wood going to do anything? No, it won't. And Fernando's got a 5, 7, and 8 split. Lou has a 5, 7, 8 split, I should say. Huge hit! Oh, what a great shot by Fernando Gacharna. I think he's going to settle into Class A quite nicely, if I might say so myself. So Rich Lamoni comfortably ahead in total on that. And then with two big strings by Fernando, he's stolen some match points. But now in terms of the four point total at stake, Ed Woodside's significantly ahead in that department. You know, maybe that eight pin is better alive than not. Maybe the five pin can ramp off at it into the seven. But boy, oh boy.
Lou can't carry the seven. Now as it is, Fernando got just a three fill, despite getting the head pin on it, and now he still can't peel back the rest of the onion. Getting the front layers at every turn. A clever play by Fernando, and he's got a nine. Diamond in the 10. This is the Caleri for Fernando. And I think I have my bearings back at long last. Ooh. That's a well-placed ball by Fernando, but the eight pin won't carry. That gosh darn inner pin. Got a nine box. Lou gets an eight. will need a couple of mark in their separate matchups in order to be competitive for total. And they're getting on the object pins, but just not making anything happen, unfortunately. Hmm. No spare for Fernando against the four pin. It's tough in these speed league formats. It's always tough. Five strings, five boxes at a time is a way of catching up with you after a while. And now the two veteran home bowlers will take, take over here. Any marks they can put together could further salt this match away. Lamoni on target, 5-7. Looks like got a decent mix now with a full delivery. Maybe he can get this 1-8. Yes, it's gone. That's a tricky shot. And Woodside... Played it perfectly. And that pin takes a hard right turn, but Lamoni's going to have to settle for eight. Diamond. Whoops, that one gets away from Ed. And he's going to end up with a two fill. Remember, Fernando had one spare as well, but it was for a three fill. And we are in frustration station to be certain across the board. But good pins by each, Lamoni 10 and Woodside 9. Oh. 
And these, and even nines could be significant here. Because if the marks don't come, these pins are going to definitely make a big difference. Three boxes left in this half alone, though. Money carves through that third row and has the one, three, seven, eight, ten. Woodside gets a good leave here. One, three, and six. Money, good shot. The corners stay up. Yes, perfectly played by Ed. And he has his second spare. So there was that significant mark I was talking about as Lamoni gets nine. No, he got ten. Well, shows you what I know. I put my head down and suddenly the ten pin vanishes. And that's a significant ten, like I mentioned. But now Ed Woodside and his match gets a chance to fill his second mark. There's a nine pin hiding back there, but Lamoni has a chance with this. The wood may be covering it just fine. Woodside, he's got the head pin. And welcome to the continuing saga of Frustration Nation. He's got the head pin and a four fill. Lamoni, head pin, nine drops, not the three. Oh, I'll tell you what that is. Another brilliant example of shot making. One more in the half remaining for each of these bowlers. Ed Woodside already on three spares and four boxes. Lamoni on an open half, so this is going to give Lou an opportunity unless he can mark in this final box. Every pin's going to matter here. He's got to leave. One, three, six. Spare fill. And that's once again, Ed has hit the head pin and cannot buy a break. Got it. If they don't want to give you a leave, just make it. He quips. <laughs> that's what good bowlers do. Nobody ever said this game was fair, but boy is Woodside persevering through it incredibly well. Woodside on a spare. You see it on your screen. All scores are confirmed. Lou needs a few marks to... Both of them need marks to be competitive in total. The Gacharna brothers do. Lou has a chance in this game because Rich Lamoni had an open half like he did. So there's still plenty in it. Though Lamoni did gain four pins. And that could be significant down the stretch. Both of them have puzzles, to say the least. One seven eight for Fernando and four ten for Lou. Lou got his object pin. Trying to claw back that four pin deficit. That could easily matter. Fernando 10 and Lou 10. Oh, 
What an absolute treat it has been to watch all these bowlers. Great storylines for all of them. Two veterans against two, well, newcomers to Division A, even though they're hardly newcomers to, to the game. Far from it. Fernando against the 1-9-10. Wood is going to carry it, yes. And remember, Woodside has not been filling his spares all that well despite some head pin hits. So although Fernando's first spare fill was a three, if he gets a good hit here, he can start doing some damage. Don't overlook that out by Lou either. He just turned seven into 10 with a good third ball. That's the third 10 in seven boxes for him. Lamoni already has three tens and five boxes. The ball stuck in his hand, in Fernando's hand, I should say, and the fill is three. Two and two split for Gacharna, for Lou. Good second ball by Fernando. I've said that a, quite a few times, how that second ball seems to have a knack for destroying most of the rack and not leaving too much for the third ball. So it looks increasingly as though No, nope. Lou has two chances still to get a mark and get back into this. Woodside has not won his string yet, but he's almost certainly won total. Huge hit by Lou Gacharna. He's thrown five strikes today, and powerful deliveries like that are the reason why. Fernando's got his spare and the third of this string. No, mmm, high on the wood and it's spun away for Lou. He's got nine. So if Lamoni got nines, he would at least tie the string. Unless Lou can get a mark here. Fernando, good power for delivery. He's got six. Now then, Lou's got a break. He's got the one three. Here comes the opportunity, perhaps. Got it. A nine box and Lou ends with a 91. Five string total of 545. Fernando 565 plus this. On the head pin. I think he can sleep well after a shot like that. Eight drop. 114, 573 for Fernando Gacharna. Well, folks, thank you so much again for watching this presentation of the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. And on behalf of Candlepin Bowling Network, we thank you very much for supporting this great game of Candlepin Bowling. to say the results are just about decided in each case. Oh, don't 
speak too soon. Hang on, Ed still has to get these pins here. Because Fernando challenged him with that spare. Oh, and that's seven. No, I, I take that back, folks. This is far from over. Eight box for Rich. I wasn't counting on the two veterans to start losing pins. It could matter. But a powerful eight drop by Ed Woodside. Left the split. On the head, but it's full, and he's got a third ball a coming on up. Woodside grabs a significant pin, it goes up to nine. And yeah, no, and no, Rich as a six. My goodness, folks, we have a competitive strings here. Rich now needs, both of these bowlers need a mark to win. The home bowlers. Nine drop for Woodside. He's got the five. One, two, seven, and nine for Rich. Gone. Rich needs an out. The totals are decided, but are just about decided, but don't speak too soon. But this spare fill for Ed Woodside very significant. The spare fills have been going up every step of the way. Two, four, five, six. Now this, which hits the head pin, and overdue, he gets a 10 fill for a strike on spare. A monster hit and an exclamation point. And Ed Woodside is approaching the 600 territory. Limoni, four and one. Need to mark somewhere along the line Rich does to take some match points. Got it! He gets the spare! Boy, we had a sweat there for a second, didn't we? Now, it's not a mark until you fill it, but those were significant for both of these two. Strike fill for Woodside. Boy, he's owed one, isn't he? He's got the 1-7 instead and still filling. Limonia has the power and the angle and a six drop. drop for Woodside. Guaranteed his win. And it's mathematical for Limoni as well. He's guaranteed at least eight. So let's tally it all up.
not full length in length anymore, I think. Well, I mean, you said no, but I mean, I Well, she said, I mean, those who are And we're checking here. What have we, folks? Five forty six to five sixty two is confirmed for Lou and Lamoni. And five seventy one to six oh three confirmed for Fernando and Ed Woodside. Ten there. And six here. And as they turn the lights out on the place, let's confirm the scores one more time. Congratulations to Rich Lamoni, 12 to 2. Lou Gaterna taking two match points for his third string victory, 136 to 117. Lou had five strikes, six spares. And Lamoni, one strike and 13 spares. And on the other match, Ed Woodside taking 10 match points to four against Fernando Gaterna. Ed Woodside, 19 marks to Fernando, 17. Well, it's lights out for us. My name is Greg Guyar. Thank you so much for watching this presentation of Candlepin Bowling Network on the ACST. And until next time.